Hey, this is Danny here from Podcast Stories. Thanks so much for listening, and I'd love for you to get the latest episodes when they're released. So make sure to follow on your favourite podcast app, or hop on over to podcasterstories.com slash listen. If you enjoy the show and want to support it, you can do that at podcasterstories.com slash support to join other supporters just like you. Thanks so much for being part of the Podcaster Stories community. And now, here's this week's episode. Hi, and welcome to Podcaster Stories. Each show, we'll have a conversation with podcasters across all mediums and share their story, what motivates them, why they started a show, how they grew their show, and more. We'll also talk about their personal lives and some of the things that have happened that have made them the person they are today. And now, here's your host, Danny Brown. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Podcaster Stories, where we meet the people behind the voices of the shows we listen to. This week, I've got a friend of mine that I've known for a few years now, uh, Bob Reed, over in the US, who's the co-host of the Old Man Podcast, uh, which I um, fell into ser- serepin- serim- what's the word? Serim- but- Serendipitously. There Something you go. Like that. <laughs> Thanks for that. My brain is, I, I, I mean, it's the afternoon here now in uh, where I am in Ontario, Canada, but my brain still hasn't kicked into gear. So I appreciate that. So Bob, tell us about the, uh, the thanks for joining us. Um, sure. Tell us about the show. Uh, or tell us a little bit about yourself and then the show uh, and we'll go from there. Well, um, you know, as you said, it's the old man podcast and <clears throat> the idea came uh, about just by me getting older. And looking at demographics and saying, man, man, there's like a lot of old boomers hanging around and maybe there might be, you know, a market, <laughs> for lack right. of a better term, you know, for anybody that may want to listen to their peers talking about everything and anything that they may be concerned about or, you know, like worried um, or just, you know, you know, feel like they can have some camaraderie with uh, the same kind of things that they're going through. I mean, that can be anywhere from, you know, from hobbies to retirement to health, uh, relationships, you know, you name it. We just want to try to cover it. So that's how the the idea came about uh, with this. And I was trying to figure out who I could actually, you know, could have a, a good, you know, somewhat comedic foil uh, for this. And um, my phone's ringing. Mute that. Um And there was a neighbor, there's a neighbor of mine who I've known for gosh, like 20 years now. And, uh, we were former co Cub Scout leaders, uh, here in the U S and, uh, it's like the, the younger version of Boy Scouts, but long story short, um, just when he and I get together, it just seems to click. We start laughing. Um, we, you know, tell inappropriate jokes and we both start cracking up, you know, just it just goes. And he says, you know, Bob, you know, every time I don't have any other relationship quite like the one I have with you when we start talking. So that kind of clued me and I said, this might be good. And he is funny. Uh, this guy could do stand up. He'd be, he's that, he's that quick. All right. And this and is Scott, right? Call. You're, you're called yeah, Scott. Scott. All yep. Right. And so you're, are you physical neighbors then? Cause I know like we, we are. Line, obviously, but you guys yeah, are physical we're, neighbors. We're literally maybe about a third of a mile away from each other. All right. And so obviously, I mean, you mentioned that it's uh, to a set demographic. Now it's called the Old Man Podcast, but can anybody listen to it or would you say it's more geared? Oh, yeah. I mean, if if, it's like, uh, I guess analogous. No, not really. But, you know, Top Gear, you know, Top Gear and the Grand Tour, you know, the the three idiots, um, 40 percent of their audience uh, is female. So it has nothing to do with cars. It just has to do with, you know, how they present it and what they do. Right. So, <laughs> well, I, and I like Top watch, Gear, but not really. <laughs> you know, and that's, I used to watch Top Gear back in the UK before I moved to Canada. And and to your point, I think it's the chemistry between the three co-hosts. And then oh, obviously absolutely. Stig, the, the driver, you know, who doesn't really get a lot of airtime, but he's still a legendary part of that show, right? Oh, yeah. That was great. Yeah. And Good especially stuff. when he moved it to Amazon, obviously there's a bit of a fallout over in the BBC. They had to move over to Amazon, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy decided to slug a producer, and you know, the BBC <laughs> had enough. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but now they're getting older too, and it's interesting I know. because you know that they 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 ditched the tent, they did they ditched the scripted stuff. It's because it takes a lot of time and effort to do it, and now they're doing like two specials a year, and you know, eventually it's just going to trail off, just because you just 
the stuff that they do and you know how much physical exertion is for three people who are extremely out of out of shape you know, except maybe for richard hammond no. but you know the, the other two are just like yeah we're kind of done and dusted so <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly. And obviously Richard Hammond had that bad accident a few years back. So I think that probably limited some of the stuff he could do. It was a touch and go for him for a while. Yeah, it's a good show. I enjoy that. Um, so you mentioned, now I think this is a relaunch of the show. Is that correct? Like you relaunched it's it this year? Be. Um, yeah, we've had some technical issues um, just because we're, you know, we're old. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not that bright. Um, yeah, the other issue is the pandemic itself. Uh, the right. pandemic has really uh, taken any kind of momentum out of recording uh, simply because uh, uh, Scott had it uh, oh, wow, for right. a couple of weeks. And then a close relative of his had it and subsequently passed away last week. Oh, so. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it, there's, you know, definitely a personal story in there. And, you know, he just says, not feeling too funny right now. And I said, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, you've got every reason not to. You know, I'm sure it's something we're going to address in the future, I hope. Um, mm. But for right now, you know, there's only four episodes. <laughs> and right. I was actually, you know, pleased that you wanted to reach out, you know, based upon others that have, you know, you know, you know, years of content. The reaction we got from people listening to it was was quite good. And this is for us just really kind of setting up the microphone and picking a topic. And I do a little bit of research for show prep, but then just riffing. I mean, the first show we actually even did, we just decided just to say, hey, let's just put on the recorder and see what happens. And we re-listened to it and we actually kind of liked it ourselves. So, you know, if it's pleasing to you and you have, to, you know, and, you know, we're critical about each other, then I think, you know, it may have, you know, value and, you know, and relevancy to other people and they may enjoy it. So, you know, hopefully we can continue. And I'll send my best to Scott. I never, obviously, I never knew that. It's, it's not something you, you know, uh, people talk about. Obviously, oh, of course. But, no, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'll send my best to Thank Scott. You. I'm really sorry for his, uh, his family member. To, to your point about the podcast, um, I think that's why I fell into it and enjoyed it. It is basically like listening to two guys that have got a beer in their backyard and talking about anything and everything. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of the two. You know, and I say this with utmost love and respect with the the two guys from the Muppet Show that were up on the balcony, uh, <laughs> <laughs> where you're never quite sure where it's going to go, but you've got uh, you know you've got the obvious friendship between the two, and they don't give a crap. You know, it's like they're talking about basically what they would talk about, and I think that's the the attraction of the show, certainly for me anyway. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, no. yeah, I think. Yeah, there's there's enough content out there that I think it's, you know, you have to find some kind of hook uh, just to gain interest. And, you know, that was the one that I came up with. It has nothing to do with work. It has nothing to do with what I do for a living. Uh, it just sounded fun. And, right. you know, these days, a little bit more fun can be had by everybody. No, for sure. I know, like, um, I'm not sure if it was yourself or Scott that was talking about it on one of your last shows about the community gym uh, <laughs> and the adventures of the, the community gyms. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just cracking up because you picked, and that's well, some of my favorite comedians are the ones that talk about situational humor, you know, and it's the things that you can relate to of everyday life. And I think with the uh, the old man podcast, that's the, the one of the, the the selling features of you like it. People relate to because they can think, yeah, I could imagine that. Yeah, I guess that's kind of you know that's kind of the whole point. I mean, anything and everything these days has to have some kind of, as I said, has to have some kind of hook. But if it's not relatable. Then and if it feels if it doesn't feel genuine, then it's not really going to gain any traction. I mean, my daughter listens to my brother, my brother and me, and um, you can definitely tell those those three guys have such amazing chemistry uh, and improvisational comedian uh, comedic chops that it just works. And you tune in just because you want to see what happens next because it's not scripted. It's pretty darn good stuff. So, I mean, I, we don't have that level of talent, but, you know, if you do it more, maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get better. <laughs> Who knows? Right. And what's that show called? My Brother and Me? My Brother, My Brother and Me. Okay. I'll, I'll be sure to check that out. Thanks for that. Check it out. Yeah. It's very good. Now, obviously you'd mentioned that at the moment, um, the show's taken a hiatus. When, but prior to that, and obviously you're starting to, you know, grow the show, relaunch it with new episodes. What were your goals for the show and what, what do you think they would be, you know, once you start to get back into it? We'd like to grow the audience. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie and say, 
you know, could this turn into something that, you know, could have, you know, a nice following, you know, might it have some revenue attached to it? Who knows? It's kind of hard to predict. I mean, you can't, you know, predict uh, viral, viral, viral ability. See, I'm not, I'm having my issues too, and it's still morning. Um, but, you know, th I think, you know, because you and I are both in marketing, we both understand that uh, you have to go out there and promote. You know, one of the things that Scott was a little bit hesitant ab about when I first approached him about the idea was he saying, yeah, I don't know about the commitment. I don't know about, you know, how, if I'm going to like this, I don't know how I'm going to like, if I'm, how I'm going to sound. And, you know, once he got into it, he said, well, that's not too bad. You know, what are your, and he asked, what are your plans for it? And I said, I want to grow it if we can, you know, if we have enough people and we spread it around, but it does take work. The content has to be good first. It's like any other product. If it's not a good product, no one's going to buy it. So we'll see how well, we'll see how well, well we do. And what's been, I know I was looking at the show um, earlier on Apple uh, iTunes and I know people were asking for more episodes to be uploaded. What's the, the reaction been, you know, from people that have either connected with you or listened to the show and maybe, you know, sent you feedback afterwards? It, it's been pretty positive. You know, just, uh, you know, a few people, you know, you know, Scott has given me some, you know, anecdotal things with relatives and, you know, relatives are probably the worst uh, critics of what you do because they know you. Um, and I don't think they're going to hold back any kind of criticism <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about what they're hearing. But, you know, people, you know, heard it, you know, I've heard, you know, the episodes to date and they said, you know, this isn't too bad. You guys are actually pretty funny. And that's gratifying to hear. I mean, even my younger brother, who is m far more comedic and dark humored than I am, uh, said, he goes, you know, that's not bad. So when you get that kind of feedback, it kind of encourages, encourages you to, to do more. Yeah, no, for, for sure. And like you say, I know, um, like I, I dread to think, you know, uh, if I let my wife listen to the podcast afterwards, I'm thinking, okay, is she going to pick, because she always picks out little things that I do in person, little physical, little ticks or whatever. Um, if I get agitated, I do a certain thing. If I get um, to speak too fast, I do a certain thing. And she's always listening for that. I think so. I, I hear you on the, like, the personal feedback side. <laughs> yeah, we have a, um, a family relative, I guess, uh, through marriage. And it's, uh, she's she's had a podcast for years now um and she's a professional comedian uh improv actress voiceover actress and she listened to it and she said you know it's pretty good you know i've been right. mine for a long time and you know you guys sound like you have you know something that that could you know work uh her issue is is that she's filthy <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't promote her stuff right. is funny she does it with a former writing partner of hers from uh, uh, from well, from L.A., but uh, she has no idea how to promote it. I think she just does it just to do it. I don't think I could actually just sit here and just do it just for the for the fun of it. I want to have you know some kind of objective. There's the marketer in me. Sorry. <laughs> no, and, and I hear you. I, I my old personal podcast that I was kind of sunsetting now. I was like the same. I I try just riff off what I was thinking at the time, but I tended to find that could be hit and miss. As I was getting more into it, I started to make little bullet points I wanted to cover in the show, but then, sure. you know, see what yeah, you have there, to. really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of like the, I'll do the research and then I will, you know, write a few, you know, jot a few, you know, things down that I want to cover. I'll share it with Scott and then I'll just let him go. And that's when the fun starts happening. <laughs> yeah. And then you just riff off each other based on yeah, where the and, yeah, and, and that's, and, and the other thing that we, that we work to do is we keep it to 30 minutes. A lot of podcasts go on for 45, an hour, hour and a half. And to me, you know, if it's, if there's lulls, um, if I'm not finding that it's not really landing or connecting, I, I tune out and I, I'll shut it off. 30 minutes, I think you can, you know, maintain some level of attention and a time commitment where people think, okay, I'll do, I'll do 30 minutes. This, you know, I can do that. So we're going to try to stick with that format. Well, I think the times, I mean, I know a lot of people listen to podcasts when they're, say, working out either at the home gym or the gym or anything. And I think to your point, maybe 30, 40 minutes is that sweet spot for like a, a decent workout, right? Where you can listen to one episode and you're done. You're, you've done your workout for the day. Yeah. And you can, you know, move on to the rest of your day. Yeah, exactly. B because you, it is still a fairly new podcast um, and some that you mentioned that, that both you and Scott aren't really technical. What, what advice would you give, I guess, to any podcasters or potential podcasters looking to start out or have just started from what you've learned in the first however many episodes? That you've sure, got? sure. Uh, avoid GarageBand. <laughs> <laughs> Do not go to GarageBand. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, Apple, 
for all the things that it does, um, it is, you know, even if it, you know, since it comes with, you know, the computer that you buy, it is still a very powerful yet unintuitive piece of software. I had to uh, look at many YouTube videos to figure out how to, you know, get two mics, you know, you know, pumped into the thing. Um, I would look for, you know, something like, you know, Squadcast, like we're on now. And in fact, I have to look at this a little bit more closely because with Scott and I start, uh, we're going to do it uh, through this uh, platform or something like it. Mm. I would look for something simple, uh, a little bit more intuitive, uh, a little bit more, you know, directed by by the platform. But go simple. Um, avoid any type of attempts to do something more than what you're capable of. I, I would definitely agree with you on the garage band. I was using Audacity for the longest time, and then Apple up the, updated their OS uh, to Catalina, and that stopped functionality for Audacity because Audacity is 32 bit and Catalina needs 64, 64 apps. Yep. Yeah. So I think Audacity is, they've got a workaround, it's in the forum, but it's not ideal. So hopefully they'll get that because I far prefer Audacity to something like you say, garage band wise. Although, as you say, squad class is pretty simple. Just plug in and away you go. Yeah, I'm liking this. Uh, yeah, I mean, this could be a, a for a way for Scott and, and me to actually see each other because uh, part of it is, you know, we're, we're reacting, you know, to each other's <laughs> well, yeah. you know, nonsense. So it, it, it seems to work. It's good for visual cues. I find that's one of the most difficult things with, say, um, two people on a podcast, that, especially if they're not in the same room, trying to understand who's finished a point and who's ready to start another point, that kind of thing. Sure, yeah. yeah. No, I'll be definitely be looking at, at this uh, in the future. No, I know just to change things up a little bit. Um, I know like you're similar to myself. Uh, um, when we're on social media, we're very vocal about our political beliefs and <laughs> some of the no. stuff that... No, really, That is surely. a lie. That is <laughs> That's a lie, downright lie. <laughs> Do no, I know that. I mean, I've I've you know, had many people like ping me and say, Do, "Aren't you, you know, aren't you concerned about people taking this the wrong way and it will stop you getting work or whatever?" Do you ever consider that from that point of view, or have you got your Facebook locked down, or what's your take on that? You know, I I, I do not have a public facing page. Only you know, friends can see it. Um, some friends appreciate the things that I post. You know, yeah, are they political? You bet um for a lot of reasons you know and sometimes people on you know will messenger or text me or saying like you know hey thanks for saying that because you know i don't have the, the guts to actually do it sure have people you know blocked me unfriended me yeah they have you know i've got like you know 400 different friends on facebook you know the ones that actually react to the stuff that i post are you know a lot fewer than that i but i do try to temper what i say and how i say it so not to be you know, completely offensive. You know, I don't know how, you know, what you think of if I'm <laughs> succeeding or, or failing in that regard. But, you know, th there's just things that, that, you know, irk my ire and um, have to kind of vent my spleen. Um, yeah. You know, there, there are cer certain things that I, I, you know, I do hold back on. Um, you know, anything that has to do with religion, I, I tend not to criticize or, you know, give my view I think, you know, where I sit on that whole, you know, spectrum, uh, probably similar to you, but I, I, I try not to, you know, make it personal. Um, I just try to use facts. No, it's now, some a, people may, yeah, they may disagree <laughs> that my facts are, you know, not your facts and I disagree with your facts, but, uh, you know, I try to be objective. Alternative facts. Alternative facts. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Still, one of my favourite uh, phrases that was ever uttered by anybody, <laughs> anywhere. Alternative facts. So, to that point, then, I obviously, like you say, you temper it to a degree um, as to what you share. If you could say any, and you don't have to say it, you know, public or whatever. But if there was one thing or any one thing that you could say to any one person at all, what would it be, and why? Wow, that's that's a bit rough because i actually want to say something but i, no, you <laughs> I, don't, want to, <laughs> okay. I don't want to imperil future subscriptions to my podcast <laughs> i you know i i think it's just can you you know can we please stay in reality uh there's just so much whether it comes from you know day-to-day -day living politics religion i mean we all have our blind spots but at the same time 
people don't, you know, there's, you know, confirmation bias is rampant, you know, depending upon no, no matter which side you're on, you could be, you know, the most ardent, you know, Trump supporter, or you could be the most, you know, virulent um, Bernie bro. Um, both sides do it. I think the issue is, is that the rest of us, you know, the other 80 percent are kind of in the middle. Um, and, you know, if if you have the ability to understand what you're reading and to seek out sources to verify what you're reading first before you start posting on anything that, you know, will make you know, the world a, a, a little bit of a better place. Yeah, sure. You have to show compassion. You have to show love. You have to show, you know, consideration, empathy, sympathy, all that. But it does come down to living in reality. And a lot of us, you know, on both sides just aren't. And I think we see that, especially online, where anybody can pretty much, you know, drop a little snippet in and say, yep, that's the, the factual statement right there. So just to, I, I guess, finish things off uh, and get people to know more a little bit about you what's one thing that not a lot of people that or would be surprised to learn about you that know you that Surpri- maybe not. Oh, um i'm a fairly decent mimic i okay yeah i i've been you know i can listen to something i've got a good ear i was a you know you know high school musician i played piano just but you know but it's all by ear so from that standpoint i can you know listen to something i can try to impersonate it I won't do anything here because I'd be embarrassed, but you know, it's gotta be, you know, kind of off the cuff, uh, top of mind thing that I do, but I just have always loved listening to sounds and voices and then try to, you know, see if I can approximate, you know, what I'm listening to, but, uh, it's That's like your party fun. trick. Yep. Yeah. More, more or less. Yeah. yeah. Now is that, so is that musical mimicking or do you do impressions too? It's, it's more voice. It's voice. Definitely more voice. And you don't want to share one right now, no? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what about trying my accent? <laughs> you know, I, I do. I, I love. I love. Act. I do love accents. I mean, you know, you know, Scottish is just you know amazing. Anything British, but there's so many different dialects, mm. and I would hate to get it wrong. No, oh, well, at least it's, you're not saying I'm Irish or Welsh or something. I, I get that a lot. <laughs> <of the> phone. <laughs> People are asking, ah, oh, so what part of Wales are you from? It's like, okay. No, no, no I'm a Yorkshireman. You know, if you, yeah. if you get you know, really, you know, down into that that deep guttural, you know, type of thing, north of, you know, north of London. But, uh, yeah. No, I mean, there, there's, you know, there's things that I've done. I think one of the, the I guess one of the, the, the strangest from television was, uh, the old program Taxi. I don't know if you're familiar mm-hmm. with that. Yeah, yeah, Taxi. Um, and a DeVito yeah, in that. You know, yeah, you know Judd Hirsch and uh, Christopher Lloyd. But Christopher Lloyd was great as as Jim Ignatowski. You know, just the stoned out, you know, drugged to addled, you know, taxi driver. Yeah. But there was one episode with with him and uh, the late uh, Andy Kaufman, um, where uh, Andy was playing Latka Gravis, and he got this recipe for cookies from his grandmother. And he wanted to become the next famous Amos. And uh, all of a sudden, people are, are sampling the cookies and uh, their behavior is changing because the cookies uh, had cocaine in them. <laughs> so every- <laughs> so everybody's acting like really weird and really strange or whatever. And, you know, Louis, you know, Danny DeVito's character comes up and he, he says, yeah, people really, you know, acting strange, he- eating all these cookies. So Jim takes out, you know, takes a whiff and he goes, well, I don't know about you, boss, but uh, there's something more magical in here than oatmeal. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he says, so he takes a nibble of it. He goes, hmm, Peru, 1972, before <laughs> the rains. And that just cracks me up every single time that he can, you know, taste, you know, this cookie and find out the, you know, the bouquet right. <laughs> and hear yeah. the stuff that's actually processed. That just cracks me up every time. Yeah, that was a great <laughs> show. Right? No, but uh, at least it, it was, it's funny to think how many great actors were actually in that, that one sitcom, you know, that went on to do really good things. Oh, yeah. I mean, but, you know, you've got, you know, Mary Lou Henner. Mary Lou Henner, and I'll, I'll loop I'll loop this back to my brother, my brother and me. Uh, there was an episode that she was a guest uh, with these guys, and she has an endemic uh, memory. She memorized, she can recall everything and anything that she's experienced. It's not photographic. 
she's like a she's she is just stores away all her experiences and she can she can just dredge it up wow it's an amazing amazing yeah. mind yeah good to be good good to be good to be an actor if you're like that wow yeah exactly you have to learn your lines that much you just read the script yep. once and you're done good you're to done. go yep good to go so bob where can people find you online if they either want to connect with you socially, if they want to you know, do business with your company, if they want to oh, listen sure. to the podcast? Yeah, the, the company is called uh, elementrpartners.com. Uh, so it's element-r.com. You can also get me on LinkedIn. Uh, I think it's just Bob Reed. Um, on Facebook, you know, if you're so inclined, uh, look me up, send me an invite, might connect, might not. <laughs> <laughs> connect at your panel. If we do, you might you may just say like, yeah, no. But uh, up to you. Open to anybody and, and everyone. Okay, awesome. And I'll be sure to drop these links into the show notes along with the, the link to the, the Old Man podcast itself. Uh, and hopefully, uh, as you mentioned, you know, uh, you might, you guys might get back into that soon. You know, everything depending on, you know, the, the current situation, yeah. obviously. Yeah. We'll, we'll take it by you know, day by day, but hopefully, you know, um, sooner than later, I hope. I hear you. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show today, Bob. Uh, I hope the the listeners enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed chatting to you. And oh, I did. That was great. It the was show. great. Um, and uh, until the next time, guys, take care. You've been listening to Podcaster Stories. If you enjoyed this week's show, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And feel free to leave a review on iTunes to help others find the show too. And we'll see you the next time on Podcaster Stories.